Okay guys, this is part two of our case study on our Mazda Miata with the alternator problem. And for you guys that are looking at this at a later time, if you search the title how to test an alternator, you'll come up with this Mazda Miata case study. It'll be part one. This is part two of that video. What we found in part one was our meter fuse was blown and that was causing our alternator to not charge and that was through the bulb circuit and we covered that pretty well I think in part one. So with a fuse that is blowing here and it's not all the time it's an intermittent issue what we need to be able to do is duplicate that condition. We don't want to send this car away and have this customer blow this fuse somewhere down the road and be stranded again. So looking at this circuit the way it's drawn that short to ground could be anywhere in this leg of the circuit but there's a little part here that we want to pay attention to. When you see a dotted line on a wiring diagram like this, there are more wires that go to this. And this, this is unique to Mitchell wiring diagrams. So a quick thank you to Mitchell for allowing me to use these diagrams in my videos. Mitchell, what they've done with their diagrams is they've redrawn them and made it easier for an aftermarket guy to be able to read them. Every manufacturer has a different way of doing their diagrams. Mitchell redraws them and makes them all the same. So a guy like me that works on 20 different car lines can very quickly identify what's going on on the circuit of the car. And the nice thing about this too is it keeps clutter out of it. Like we have the whole charging system here. We don't need the entire fuse box. We don't need the entire main relay. We don't need all of the wires that go to this to show me the components of the alternator system. It's pieces of it. But you have to be aware in a case like this that when a fuse is blowing, for example, in, in this dotted line, that means there are other circuits that share this splice. And so it's important to know that, that you're not just chasing this wire for a short to ground for that fuse, we have other wires that go here. And it's the same thing up here, dotted line on a box that is a partial view of that component. Same thing with the instrument cluster. This is a partial view of the instrument cluster. That's what these dotted lines mean. So you see a solid line on a component, that would be everything in it. And that's more reading Mitchell diagrams and that's really kind of getting off track here a little bit. But what's important for us, there are other wires that go here. Our sort to ground could be anywhere in this circuit and we need to be able to find it. So the next step on Mitchell would be to look up what's called a power distribution wiring diagram. And I've done that already. And on this power distribution diagram, there can be anywhere from one to four or five pages worth. And on this particular car, there's only one page. And what we wanna do is we wanna find that same meter fuse in here. And I've done that already, highlighted it yellow. So I'll focus you in on that. And these are all of the areas and components that would share this fuse. So this main fuse or meter fuse could blow if a short to ground is in any of these circuits. And that's the supplemental restraints, that's the airbag, that's the exterior lighting, this is the power antenna, cruise control, warning systems, transmission controls, engine controls, instrument cluster, and our shift interlock. And so this part can be a little bit time consuming. Shorts to ground, they can, they can take a lot of time, especially if you have five different modules sharing the same circuit and you have to unplug each of those modules and they're located one's under the seat and one's under the, under the dash and one's in the trunk and maybe you got the whole car ripped apart. So what we want to try to do here is we want to shortcut where this short to ground is. We want to look at all the components that are on this circuit and think about the keys with intermittents. And the key with an intermittent is heat and vibration. So somewhere in this circuit, we're pretty sure that it's most likely gonna be related to something that's either near something hot or has movement to it. Most likely is where we see shorts to ground and wiring damage. So what we wanna do one at a time is pull these up and take a look and break these down and see what's all on here. So I've done that and we'll start at the beginning here, the supplemental restraint system. I'm gonna try to move through this quickly so this video isn't super long. Uh, this is our video of our supplemental restraint system and I'm just going to stay zoomed out. I'll talk about it and I think the bigger screen once we're done here will show up better than this little camera screen. There's our meter fuse up top. 
feeds the instrument cluster bulb for the airbag and then also the airbag module. So chances of a, a short in here in this area, this is all interior of the car, probably not gonna be this circuit, but we have to keep that in the back of our mind. We could have a short somewhere here. Uh, the next one on our power distribution, let's look at our exterior lighting. That's this one's our exterior light diagram. And so it's pretty generic term, exterior lights. Which exterior lights? Well, now we know. Meter fuse, same fuse. We see a manual transmission and an automatic option. We're, we are a manual, so we ignore this. We don't have an automatic. So our eyes are not even going this direction. We have a backup light switch. And so it's the reverse lights that are on this circuit. That's helpful to know that an area where we're gonna wanna look is gonna be in the reverse light area, good visual inspection on maybe those components in the trunk, things like that. So exterior lights, and it goes a little further. This one's with, with DRL. We don't have daytime running lights. And this is a continuation of this. What we have here is our turn signals. So meter fuse up top, again, comes down to our our turn signal switch and then splits to the flasher and I've changed the colors because you can see the left and right sides and you can have a short anywhere in here too. So remember that our backup lights, our airbag, our turn signals are on this circuit. Continue it. Looking at the order in which they have this listed on the power distribution diagram, we're gonna go to cruise control next. Sorry, I missed one, power antenna. So we did our airbag, our exterior lights, power antenna. And we did a visual on that because power antennas are known for shorting. That's a very commonly shorted component. And what we found is the antenna has been replaced with a manual one and it's been unplugged. Now the thing is, all of this wiring is still there. So we still want to take a look at it, but there's your same meter fuse feeds our power antenna relay and inside of this it's a solid state device and remember that there's going to be powers going to this motor unit but none of this is here anymore so we just look at the connector make sure we don't have any issues back there uh, before I continue remember this is an intermittent short if it was a constant short we could do this differently we can actually plug a tool in a short circuit tester and use an inductive ammeter and follow needle sweeps and find out where our short's at. Not the case here, guys. We're gonna have to do visual inspections to hopefully be able to find this problem. All right, so next one, cruise control is also on here. And we have our cruise control switch. And it looks like, is that power of the bulb? No, I don't think so. Kind of hard to see this. I might have mapped that a little differently. No, when that switch closes, it does power the bulb. So. The cruise control switch, and then really this isn't carrying any kind of current. I have this listed as an input here. That's my cruise control unit. Anywhere where I have this colored yellow, we could have a short, but again, it's inside the car. Not real highly suspected component, this cruise control system, but keep it in the back of your mind. Our warning system is just, there's again our meter fuse, same fuse. We have our warning unit and then we have our seatbelt indicator light interior components transmission this would be for an automatic I just X'd the whole diagram out because this is a manual transmission so none of this applies we're not dealing with our park neutral switch because this is not an automatic so we're going to ignore that diagram next one I have is my engine management engine computer system and what that was listed as on this power distribution diagram it's a mess isn't it power distribution had this listed as our engine controls well that's pretty vague statement isn't it engine controls could be anything engine controls like what injectors coils we don't know right so we pull up our computer diagram for our engine and we look for our meter fuse and we see it up top up here. We follow it this way to the next page and that next page, it comes over here. 
comes down here to this component, which is my check engine light. So the check engine light is powered by this circuit. And this is um, really the first thing that I've come across that has piqued my curiosity. Both O2 heaters are shared off of this meter fuse. The meter fuse powers both heater circuits. That's the first place I'm gonna look where I'm at so far in all these diagrams. Do you talk about heat and vibration? O2 sensors have both. So we may start there. Let's finish the rest of this. That was our engine management. So it was just the check engine light and the O2s. And then the rest of it was the instrument cluster. So again, meter fuse feeds into the cluster, feeds all the bulbs, feeds the tachometer. Remember our tachometer didn't work in the first video. None of the gauge lights worked. None of the dash lights worked. So there's your tie-in for the cluster. And then our shift interlock was our final one. Again, this is for an automatic. So the shift interlock system really isn't going to apply to our car. And so there you have it. Short to ground test, not so easy really on this car. When, or really any car for that matter, depends on the circuit you're dealing with. And uh, that's kind of the procedure you gotta go through. Eyeball everything that's on the circuit. And our thought process here, guys, is to figure out what is the easiest place to start. And again, the, the key here is heat and vibration. So of all of the components that we looked at, I wanna to go to the O2s. We're gonna do a visual inspection on the wiring of the O2s, see what they look like, we'll go from there. All right, quick visual on my upstream O2 because it's easy to see. It's right down there in the corner of the picture. Wish I had my laser pointer with me, I don't. There's your O2 and I'm following the harness, following the wiring, and I'm not gonna be able to show you this, guys, but the connector comes up to this location up here. This is your O2 connector. And just looking at areas where the harness is gonna ride, anywhere where it's laying next to something metal is what we look for. And I have to tell you guys, this upstream one looks good. I'm gonna go underneath the car now and take a look at the downstream one. All right, I got the car up off the ground and uh, I'm laying on the ground here. So these shots are gonna be a little bit tough. and. Right away, guys, we see an issue, and, and what we see is, is someone was here, and, and what we have is, is some butt connectors, and most likely this O2 was replaced with a universal unit, and uh, that could be our issue. I remember now as we're, as we're doing this that the owner of the car told me that he's had an O2 code for a long time, so this may or may not be related. I'm sure this is related to his code. It's probably not a good repair here, but is this related to the short to ground? Not sure yet. Let's take a look, closer look. Okay, so looking very close at this harness, we see our, my O2's here, the wiring coming off of it, these the zip tied repair here, and there's all your butt connectors. Not so much worried about this. I don't see any, any areas where it would be laying next to metal. This part of the the harness is on a rubber grommet for the exhaust. That's not really all that great, but here's what we don't like. This grommet right here is where it's gonna go through the floorboard, and that's meant to protect the wiring from rubbing on the body of the car. Well, let's take a look at that. And this is the kind of stuff we look for, guys. That grommet is there for a reason. This zip tie sitting right here and uh, one of the things too, when you're doing this kind of stuff, don't move the harness. Pay attention to where it's resting on the metal first. So look at it very close. See if I get a zoomed in shot of this. Those wires are resting against this metal ridge right here. And what I like to do is, and I, I'm not sure I can show this on the camera, but I would like to push on this area with the new fuse in its place and see if I can pop that fuse before I even turn it around to look at it. And the reason I say to do that, sometimes to turn the harness around to look at it is very, very difficult. But if you can look and see where the wires are laying, you can re reproduce the problem by simply pushing on the harness right there. You know what, I'm gonna try to do it. I did it before and uh, you know, I'm gonna give it away here. This is where our problem's at. And I actually saw a little puff of smoke. So maybe I can recreate that again. 
I never looked at the harness yet because I didn't want to turn it around and and uh, miss the opportunity to show you guys this. So let me uh, put a fuse back in this. In fact, I think I did. Um, let me uh, go turn the key on. All right, this would be nice if I had two cameras here, one to show you the dash and, and the other to show you underneath. What we can look for to know if this fuse blows is just look at your dash lights. Remember, the dash lights are all in this circuit, so we're going to lose our dash lights when this shorts. I'll just have to show it to you in segments. So I got the key on, looking at the dash lights, it's going to go back underneath, and I'm going to push on that wire and uh, see if I can recreate the short. All right, back under the car on this area here, and I'm hoping I can keep my finger out of the way. You know what, um, can you hand me my pocket screwdriver up there? And I'll keep my finger out of the picture here and, and push on this. And what I'm hoping to do, guys, is show you, show you the short. I got it to do it, it was pretty cool. Just kind of rubbing it on the area where it would have been. I can't really. Be a little bit difficult to recreate sometimes. I was able to do it before. And the thing is, is once you move a harness, guys, you miss that opportunity. And that's why I say don't pull on the harness until you take a real good look at all your metal contact points and then push on areas gently without moving it. And I've moved this enough that I've moved it away now. Let me, uh, I, I'm not gonna be able to show you it blowing, but I will be able to show you the short. Oh, well, maybe let's try one more time. Nope, I moved it too much. Need to invest in a helmet cam. I've tried using them. The quality is pretty poor. I can't see what I'm doing. This is so hard to do this stuff one-handed. Okay, let's take a look at this. Again, guys, I did have it short. And what I did is I, I pushed on the harness. And we have to look real close. And uh, I forget what color the wire was on the on the uh, diagram for the meter fuse. John, can you look at the diagram? Any one of those diagrams that have colored yellow and tell me the color of the wire? I, it was either black and yellow or... Oh, yeah, it's black, it's and, black yellow. and yellow? That's yeah. what I thought. So, so if you look at this black and yellow wire, I... Not sure this camera's gonna even pick it up. It's Let's see if I can keep focused here. It is so small. Oh yeah, you can definitely see it. That's right there. This right here, my friends, is your intermittent. I mean look how small that is. There's the tip of my pocket screwdriver. It gives you a little perspective. Right? That part right there, that bare wire was rubbing on this metal housing right here. How long did it take to do that? Probably thousands of miles of driving. That's why the grommet was there and that's why we don't start pulling on harnesses. You know, look at the harness where it lays and push on it. Recreate the problem. I was able to do it once and I couldn't do it again for the camera. I apologize. That is our issue. It looks like it actually cut the purple wire here too a little bit. And uh, he has been dealing with some oxygen sensor codes for a while. Maybe we now know. Definitely this is new, though. That didn't short the ground earlier, and the fuse didn't fix itself. This is the first time he's had a blown fuse, but he has had rear O2 codes. This needs to be repaired, guys. I'm not showing the repair. You know, the repair is going to involve using some heat shrink. We could actually slip the terminals out of here, put some heat shrink over this, redo the grommet, and truthfully, get the right O2 sensor for this. These universal O2s, I am not a fan of at all, especially underneath the car. This is in a really bad environment, and uh, these weren't even done right because they're not sealed up at all. This actually looks like the good 
style butt connectors, the heat shrink style butt connectors, but someone didn't bother to use the heat when they were done to seal that up. That would have been the right way to do it, but not the case here. So we'll, we'll get a new O2 for this. The correct one will fix the wiring and hopefully you guys learn something from intermittent shorts, what to look for, how to duplicate it. Heat and vibration was the key for this one. And again, when you see and start doing visual inspections on harnesses, don't move the harness, push on it, try to recreate the area where it's at and you'll find stuff like that. You'll miss that kind of stuff if you, if you rush it too much. Short to ground on the downstream O2 heater circuit and it wasn't always shorted. I'm sure going down the road, driving, certain vibrations, certain road conditions that would rub and bam, there you go, pops a fuse. And uh, that's the whole problem right there with this car. So hopefully you guys like that. And uh, again, I will put a hyperlink for part one of this and I am comfortable letting this car go now to my friend that I work with. We don't want to have him get stranded. And had I let this car go, he definitely would have gotten stranded. And these are the steps you gotta do to find stuff like this. So thanks a lot and uh, hope you guys like that.